service, a choir cantata at 11 o'clock, and my mother led the uh, cantata, led the choir for 32 years, but uh, when a kid was all excited on Christmas Eve, and you would go into the church, you'd see your friends, it was all hush-hush, you couldn't talk, uh, you had to be real quiet, it was all reverent going in, reverent coming out, and if you uh, if you saw a friend, a couple of rows away, and you said, hey, Bob, hey, over here. Uh, they had the quiet police that were walking around and you know, <laughs> grab me on the shoulder and shh, shh. And uh, if they saw you uh, laugh, uh, the immediate excommunication from the church. So, uh, <laughs> just joking about that. But uh, I just thought it was so the reverse of the way things ought to be on Christmas Eve, especially for children. So uh, when I got to be a pastor, I said, we're going to change that, at least in our church. So you will have fun tonight. You will definitely laugh. And have a good time, and we're so glad that you're here. One of the things that a lot of people miss in the Christmas story in Luke chapter 2, before it goes on to the next part of Jesus' life, it says, Mary treasured all these things in her heart. And what that means is Mary knew that this was a sweet memory. So our goal tonight is to give you something that you can treasure in your heart that years from now will bring back a sweet smile of church and whose birthday it really is. So let's celebrate Jesus' birth. All right, in our church, what would a Christmas Eve be without a visit from the linebacker? Here at the National Institute for Student Ministries, we developed a revolutionary method specifically designed to bring a fresh awareness to the Christmas season. Merry Xmas, Little Vera! Merry Xmas! Oh, oh, oh! It may appear unorthodox, but the results are staggering. Merry Xmas! Why do I want to be the Christmas linebacker? Well, let me put it to you this way. You see, I'm here to put the Christ into Christmas. Let me hear you say Jesus. Jesus! Now don't mess with the linebacker, babies. Say it like you mean it. Say Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> you see, when I hear Christmas, there's, there's something that bubbles inside of me. is only relevant to a few things. X-Files, X-Football players, but not Xmas. It's Christmas. Merry Xmas. Merry Xmas. <laughs> this ain't no sleigh ride, baby. 
We were intrigued by the linebacker's emotional, spiritual, and psychological influence. Not to mention the physical impact. Yes, Christmas is all about sharing the love. Who wants eggnog? Is theology? Well, it's impacting. You see, God didn't show up in a rocket ship. He didn't show up in a Cadillac. He showed up as a baby. That's what Christmas is about. You dig? So you've heard about the shepherds being meek. But the linebacker's here to give you a tweak. Yes, we certainly do know how to tackle Christmas. <laughs> you see, materialism has ruined Christmas. It's not about presents under a tree. It's about God's presence with us. Not sure what you need this Christmas? Merry Xmas, son. Open and hurry. We've got the perfect gift for absolutely everyone. <laughs> so why are you smiling? You just disrespected your parents. What's wrong with a football? <laughs> From all of us here at NIFSM, we hope your Christmas is a real hit. <laughs> May I have your attention, please? As a part of Seymour Christian Church's 2013 Christmas Eve celebration, it is my pleasure to make this introduction to you. <laughs> Please welcome the United States of America's men's Olympic synchronized swimming team.
all stand and let's uh, begin our time of worship. I'll go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this night of laughs and family. And Lord, uh, to come around and to focus on you tonight, Lord, it's, uh, this, this is why we come, Lord. Uh, so please focus our hearts and our minds this morning, or this afternoon, Lord. We love you and we just come to your throne room tonight to worship the King of Kings who came and he's given us hope and given us a joy. So Lord, we, we lift up our, our spirits tonight. We lift up these songs of praise to you, the Almighty King who came and give us and has given us the hope of, a, of an eternal life with you. Lord, we love you. We sing these praises in your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
And when that scripture from Luke 2, 1 through 20 uh, is over with, Mona is going to sing a song to prepare our hearts for giving a beautiful scriptural song that I just, I just love. And I love to hear her sing. Uh, and when that is over with, when Mona's song is over with, Kyle's going to start some uh, beautiful background music. And at that time, we just ask you to come, take your time. Uh, come with your family when one table is clear and another family goes back. You guys come up and uh, we'll take this next, uh, however long it takes, for you to come up and to have communion uh, with your family. And then go back to your seats and uh, we'll move on after that. This is a, a very serious time. This is what we come to remember. Jesus born in a stable in Bethlehem. And then his mission to the cross 33 years later on a hillside outside of Jerusalem that we remember now. From Bethlehem, Luke 2. Here we are in Bethlehem in the shepherd's fields just outside of the town. I want to read the scripture to you from Luke 2, the birth narrative of Jesus and the events that happened in these very fields right here behind me, the night of Jesus' birth. Luke 2, starting with the first verse. It says, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that was taken while Quirinius was the governor of Syria, and everyone went to his hometown to register. So Joseph went also up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds had said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. From the shepherd's field in Bethlehem. She was handpicked by God, highly favored, the angel said. And through this young teenage girl, the king of kings would enter a time from eternity. Despite her questions and her fears, Mary simply said, Lord, be it unto me according to your word.
Let's go ahead. There is a candle and never so some brightly burning.
one, two, three, blow me. <laughs> Maybe sing. Here's your five. I'm not afraid. 